Um, I wanted to discuss the keys of the flutes, the different flutes that are, uh, the different keys and, and what they do and how, and how they operate. Now, <clears throat> I've had an interesting experience in the last year, and that is um, uh, this little sparrowhawk in the key of A that I make. Um, I sell it to quite a few people, and uh, it's a very, very easy flute to play, and that's the key. Beginners, and for a beginner, it's someone that's never, when I say beginner, someone that's never played any instrument before, none at all. This is a wonderful flute because the shorter the bore, the bore length is from here to here, and the shorter the bore, the easier it is going to be for, that, for someone to play because the air only has to travel this distance. So in essence, the longer the, the flute is, the more difficult it becomes to play because you have to control the breath that much more, okay? What winds up happening is, and, it, and it's, it's, I've had this experience in, in particular in the last year, that uh, someone will purchase this flute and they get really good very fast. You know, I mean, really get to play and really have fun with it. And uh, after a year of play, they'll call and say, gosh, you know, I really loved your Sparrowhawk. It was really fun. And I'd love to have a, a Golden Eagle F sharp because I, I just really enjoy the way Native American music, I enjoy how they play and what they play. And uh, could you please uh, send me one? I, want, I, would like to really, uh, I would like to have one of those. And we'll send, I, I send them a flute, make one for them. And uh, <clears throat> here's the F sharp. And they'll get it. And if you look at the difference in, in bore length, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty substantial we're talking about. Uh, in, in, in especially when you're talking about musical instruments, the, the, the length is pretty substantial. And they're going, most everyone wants to get right on what they played on the Sparrowhawk in the key of A, they're going to want to play on the F sharp, especially they're going from a five hole to a six hole flute. And they find that they break on the low note, And I get a phone call and say, ah, oh, you know, I don't like that flute at all. There's something wrong with it. It keeps squeaking. And, and what the issue is around different flutes is that every flute has its own personality. When you're buying a long bore flute, okay, it's much more subtle in terms of play. It's, it takes a lot more breath control. It takes much more subtlety in getting the note. You're not going to get the same amount of amplitude. So it's important to not expect that, okay? Um, I was reading an article by Carlos Nakai, and one of the things that I, I, I loved was that he said that, you know, uh, he says, I, don't, I, no, I no longer criticize flutes. Uh, what I realize is that uh, every flute has value, and I just try and take the flute for what it is and make music out of it. And I thought that was such a wonderful uh, way of looking at flutes. Uh, and, and, and the same thing with what happens with a large, different sized flutes is you, you have to respect the instrument. And every instrument has its own personality, its own style of play. The F sharp is much more melodic, it's much deeper. If you go from here to a really high pitched flute, this is a, uh, the kestrel in, in the key of D. Okay, the, uh, the smaller the bore, it's a very short flute, plus the bore itself is tiny. Okay, it's going to be a totally different style of play. Okay, uh, bass flutes, for instance, this is a, a condor bass in the key of D, it's going to take a much more breath control. Because that low note, you have a huge bore, very long, fairly long, and what winds up happening is when you blow, that air has to travel all the way down to here to make that note. And if you overblow, it's going to break to the next octave much easier than it would on the A flute, or for that matter, on a real small little kestrel flute. Much more subtlety. And also, the, the, the thing with a bass flute, it's not going to want to be lively and jam and just, you know, get um, hyper with it. You've got to be very melodic, it's very moody. Um, the, another flute, for instance, would be the um, mid-range flute, okay, a mid-range bore. This is a much smaller bore, and it's even shorter than the, the Spirit Hawk in key of E. This is an, um, a, it's called a Merlin in the key of C. High flutes, high pitch flutes <clears throat> are starting to become, uh, I've noticed more and more people are interested in high pitch flutes. It used to be all everyone just wanted low, you know, real low sounding flutes, and they're wonderful, I, believe me, I, 
I, I love playing our bass flute. But high-pitched flutes are becoming much more popular in the last couple of years. And one of the reasons being is, first of all, they're very, very easy to play. The smaller the bore, you have much more control with your breath. You can just really wail on it. Very forgiving, okay? The thing about a high-pitched flute is that it demands to be tongued a lot more to get that note real clean and crisp because otherwise it can sound very shrill. Without tonguing. Hear the difference. Um, and again, when you get into a smaller flute, it's even more so. It, it, it gets very, it, uh, smaller flutes are very lively, they're real up energy, and just as the opposite with a bass flute. Uh, double flutes have become very important and, and become very popular. Uh, I used to make a, uh, uh, most of the double flutes that I've seen and that most flute makers make are uh, uh, double barrel shotgun style. Uh, I've seen them made like this as a double barrel or they make them like this as a double barrel shotgun. Uh, I, I used to make this style flute. Um, I, I've chosen to make a different style. Uh, this, our double flute is shaped very similar to an A. Uh, for various reasons that we, we've decided it's a little bit easier to play and it, it, it gets a little crisper and more amplitude. But <clears throat> it's a, double flutes are wonderful to play. So the idea is that you've got a drone, which is, if all these holes are closed, this is a, um, a uh, two hawks in the key of A. Okay? When all the holes are closed on this side, you're playing the key of A. All the holes are automatically closed over here, you're playing an A over here as well. So when you're playing together, they have two mouth holes, so you can play one flute at a time. Okay? When you blow through both of them, they're in harmony. Now you play the melody on the fingering side. The other thing is you can drive this drone to the high octave while you're playing the high note here. drop back down again. <clears throat> the, the, the thing about double flutes is they do take a different style of play. Even though they have two mouth holes, um, you, can move, you, you need to be conscious of moving your breath one way or the other. If you want to focus on the, um, if they have two mouth holes, if you want to focus on the melody side, and in, in our particular flute, you move the melody straight in front of you so the breath is going straight into it and less breath is going off to the side. Uh, with a, uh, a shotgun style, you're going to have to uh, probably move the flute over a little bit and so that you can get more direction into one. If you want the, uh, the drone to be more uh, dominant, just move the flute over so the drone is in front of you. So it, it does take a little bit um, of, of knowledge and and on, I guess experimentation, I should say, not so much knowledge, but experimentation, because it's a very different style of play. They're very fun. The, the, the nice thing about this flute is that you are able to play single and double, and I've noticed more and more flute players are switching to that.